name's J.C. McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. I just want to let you know that I've missed you. I just hope that you've missed me. Again, building lines forever. We're on a mission to shift the culture. We're here to bring you amazing guests, bring you, bring you phenomenal people, people who are shifting the culture with the work that they're doing in communities across our world. And so our first guest is just, I just don't even know the words to, to really describe the work that she's doing, but it's powerful. So our first guest today on Building Minds Forever is Yasmin Arrington, founder and CEO of Scholar Chips. Uh, thank you for coming on Building Minds Forever. Thanks for having me, Brandon. Awesome. So Scholar Chips, let's, let's start there. Um, why, what was the, what ignited the spark mm -hmm. for you to start Scholarships. Right. So first, Scholarships, uh, the CHIPS is an acronym for Children of Incarcerated Parents. Oh, yes, yes. Bars. Yeah, <laughs> bars. Yes. Okay. So you put the scholar and the CHIPS together. So Children of Incarcerated Parents. The idea is to break the stigma and, and the sh a lot of the stigma and shame that comes along with incarceration or having an incarcerated parent or loved one. Um, they're still scholars. They're still smart. They're still intelligent. They can do anything and everything they put their minds to. But in terms of how and why I started it, um, it for a few reasons. One, when I was a junior in high school, my grandmother and I were researching for scholarships for me to apply for so that I could afford to go to college. And my grandmother mentioned to me one day, she said, Yasmin, you know, I don't see any scholarships for youth with incarcerated parents. And so uh, that was an observation that, that she made and then that I made. And like you said, once you, um, Ha, you know, Once you make an observation, you got an you obligation. Go, you have an obligation, yes. exactly. Mm -hmm. So so I had and have an obligation. And I was in a program called Learn Serve International, which is a nonprofit in D.C. that teaches young people about social entrepreneurship and social change making. And they asked us to identify issues in our community that we wanted to 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 change or, or to improve. And so my issue became mass incarceration. And my, my father has been in and out of prison and jail all of my life. So I put all those pieces together. And so I was moved to start a scholarship mentoring program for children with incarcerated parents. Mm, powerful. Shifting the culture. Shifting. That's amazing. I love it. So um, you, you with the work that you've done. Uh, you, you've received a lot of accolades and awards and, uh, and that's, that's amazing because it's an honor to be honored. Um, how does that make you feel, you know, for something where you're just, you make an observation, you have an obligation, you follow through on it. Right. And now, you yeah. know, the world is seeing the impact that you're making. How does that make you feel? Well, I'll say first and foremost, and I'm being completely honest here. Um, yes, it is. It is nice. Um, it is an honor to be honored. But honestly, I would be doing the work regardless, even mm. if there were no titles, mm -hmm. even if there were no awards. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's part of my purpose yes. and I'm a woman of faith and, mm. and I thank God for, he gave me this as, mm -hmm. as an obligation, as, as part of my purpose. So, uh, I, I love what I do and it, 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 it's, it just happens. It's because I love it and, and it's my baby. So awards are nice mm -hmm. and, and I'm thankful for them. But, but what I say, I think the, the great thing about the awards is that it, it adds in, in the realm that we live in, it adds legitimacy mm. to the work. Yeah, um, it's it, true. It, you know, credibility. Mm -hmm. um, Talk to me. Yeah, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, and it brings attention to to the issue. Yeah, um, changing the culture, like you said, that mm -hmm. is the 
one of the main uh, goals of scholarships is to change the culture of how we think about youth that have incarcerated parents, how we think about their family members and, and education, you know, uh, education equity. So. so, I mean, you're in divinity school now. You graduated t- two years ago. Two, 2015 two, from undergrad. From undergrad, okay. Yeah. Scholarships has been along for how long? Uh, since 2010. Okay, so. all right. <laughs> you with me? You with me here? Okay. So, how do you find time to to do all of this? The, the balance and you know the building of your organization in the midst of being a student in undergrad, graduate school. Like, how do you just find time to be so awesome? Well, how do you find time? <laughs> I, that's, I'm trying to learn from you. That's why I got you on the show. <laughs> well, um, I'm just messing with you because I know. you know you you. Uh, you know, are able to balance so many things just and, regular brother. and impact. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Just, just in, impacting lives, right? Impacting mm-hmm. children's lives. Uh, well, I just try to maximize the time that I have. Yes. Including sleep, time mm-hmm. to sleep. Boom. You know, it's, you got the same 24 hours in the day. That exactly. Beyonce got. Ex- exactly. That, mm-hmm. Exactly. But leaders who take on a lot, yes. I think it's important for us to remember in order for us to be effective yeah. and, and to be at our maximum capacity without burning out, we need proper rest, proper mm-hmm. rest, proper sleep, um, and, you know, nutrition and all of that. Uh, so there's that. I, I, I try to make sure I take care of, of myself um, physically and then mentally, emotionally mm-hmm. and yeah. spiritually. Um, and you know, college, there was a lot of free time. This so is true. Mm-hmm. every once in a while I would party, you mm-hmm. know, go hang out. But the I rest of the bit, no. you're right. You, you're right. Turn you got to turn up mm-hmm. for the one mm-hmm. time. You mm-hmm. <laughs> but other than that, I just I was always on it. Technology is amazing. Technology has allowed me to do a lot of this. I yeah, can do absolutely. it virtually. I yeah. can do it. Send emails, make calls, be on social media. And that's a lot of the platform, except for our live in-person events. Yep. Yeah. So uh, how can you tell us, tell us some of the, the scholars that you have given awards to and some of the stories that you've heard, you know, in the work that you're doing? Right. That's an excellent question. Um, we have one young lady who I, I love to rave about. I love to rave about all of them. Um, her name is Raina Nakwanyo, and both of her parents are Cameroonian. They're mm-hmm. from Cameroon, um, but she was born and raised in the United States um, when she was in high school. Her mother, uh, the the I guess federal agents or police, you know, bro- barged into mm-hmm. into the home and and did a search. And her mother ended up getting arrested, and she went to the trials with her mother. So you know that was was um, a very stressful and humbling situation for her and her family. And uh, her mother was away for the rest, the remainder of her high school. A career and then some of college. And fortunately, her mother is out now. And so mm. they've adjusted mm. and her older sister is engaged. Mm. But but what's beautiful is that she was one of our first, the, one of the scholars from our first cohort yeah. in 2012. Mm-hmm. And she just recently graduated from Old Dominion University wow. and she's going on to law school at wow. FAMU. So beautiful. that's that's one. Um, and I have a young lady named Gabrielle. Both of her parents have life in prison. Wow. But she recently also was a part of our first cohort. She was our first applicant ever. Okay. And she has now since uh, graduated with a degree in business administration. Mm. Yes. So okay. there, I mean, and, and our young men too. I mean, just simply yeah. phenomenal. Culture shifting. You're walking in ordered steps. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so you are, uh, you model. Um, okay, give, give me the look, give me the look. Yep, mm-hmm. yep, there we go. Damn, <laughs> bars. So, um, how did you get into that and, and even develop the confidence to, 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 to do that, to do work mm-hmm. in modeling? That's an excellent question, Brandon. Uh, so I love to tell this story as well. When I was a freshman or oh, a first year student in college, I had a friend um, who was a transfer to Elon University and she was a photography major. And one day she she said, hey, Yasmin, you know, I'm working on a project for my class. Would you be my subject? Would you like to, to do mm. a photo shoot? I was like, ooh, that sounds like fun. Pitches. Sure. I'm all about pictures. There you go, pictures. Mm-hmm. I was like, sure, why not? Um, and I just, you know, I, I got all into it and I thought about a theme for it. We talked about a theme and I picked out my clothing and my shoes and did my makeup and I brought a wig and like it was 
for the first time to as an amateur i mean for both of us it was absolutely amazing killed it it, it was a killed it and mm. the energy that i mean it just was something that i hadn't felt before so sort mm. of like that feeling you get when you discover your passion mm -hmm. or you get this rush you know from a roller coaster or whatever that's how i felt and so she said, Yasmin, you should try to get into modeling. I was like, oh no, you know, I heard, I had heard the horror stories mm -hmm. and women eating cotton balls and things like trying not to like starving themselves. I was like, that's, yeah. I'm not interested in that. You know, I love who I am, but fast forward, um, I started doing research on it. I was like, well, it doesn't hurt. Let me just look online again, technology, absolutely amazing. And I found what the, what has been now called or coined plus modeling, mm -hmm. uh, or curvy modeling. And so people like Ashley Graham now who are, they're breaking barriers, you know, on the cover of Sports Illustrated recently and on the cover of Cosmopolitan. This is huge. This is, I mean, it, it, it hasn't happened. Culture since, shifting. Exactly. Culture shifting. There you go. Awesome. So, uh, you, and you, did you, you recently just won an, 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 an honor, uh, yeah. your Miss. Oh yes, Miss District of Columbia Miss plus District America 2016. Bars. Okay. <laughs> That's just amazing. Congratulations you. to you Thank on that. You. So if people want to uh learn more about scholarships right. to um you know bring you to speak or they want to apply, yes. and then if people are interested in you being on the cover of their magazine oh, and please, everything, by how all do means. how do people get in touch with you for the different things that you're doing? Well, right. For scholarships, they can visit our website at scholarships fund f u n d dot org mm -hmm. again that's scholarships fund dot donate org. everybody okay make sure to donate yes there's a donate button and mm -hmm. you can also donate by by check um, through our p.o box and then of course on our social media twitter instagram uh, is all at scholarships and that's c-h-i-p-s for myself um yasmine errington.com and then at yazzy speaks y-a-z-z-i-e-s-p-e-a-k-s and before we close Brandon, I would like to present you with a scholarships t-shirt. Mm, thank you so yeah. much. You see, people, the people love me. Yeah, they we love do Bill love you. Forever. Scholarships, they're on a mission to sift the culture. Yasmin, thank you for coming on Building thank Minds you, Forever. Brandon. And we'll be following you. We support you and make sure you keep in touch. I will. All right. When we return here on Building Minds Forever, we're going to meet author, teacher, educator, facilitator, Lavette Coney. We'll be back here on Building Minds Forever. Loss of income, medical bills, car repairs. What does it mean to you and your family? A law firm is not about one person. It's about a well-coordinated, synchronized legal team that understands you and tells your story. I'm attorney Jeffrey Dressler for Dressler Strickland, injury lawyers. Hablamos su idioma, and this is what we do. 24-7-11-22. That's 24-7-11-22.
Welcome back to Building Minds Forever. I'm your host, Brandon Frame. Again, we're here at Building Minds Forever on a mission to shift the culture. Today, we're bringing you three amazing women who are doing phenomenal work um, in their respective fields. Our next guest is Ms. Lavette Coney, who is a courageous educator, facilitator, and just all around amazing woman. Lavette, thank you for coming on Building Minds Forever. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So uh, you're, you're, you're awesome, right? And so thank we're just going you, to... Brandon. Uh, get into what, uh, why you're here today is social justice and English language learning uh, by, uh, with a book that you have contributed a chapter to. Yes. Um, let's start with, um, you know, what initiated uh, your interest in this book project? Well, my issues around wanting to know about social justice and equity from, from the time I was in high school it was initiated from that point on, um, became an educator and realized that that this work needs to be done by a number of people and looking specifically at teachers. 80% of the teachers are of European descent and don't have the cultural competency to deal with issues of um, racism and equity. Mm. So it came around. It was that's, that's powerful. That. That's, that's, so, that's so real. And it's something like people try to kind of just gloss over. Nobody really wants to like, this is an issue. Mm. And in order to move our children forward, all children, mm. we need to um, talk about this. So um, what does social justice have to do with teaching English and teaching in general? Well, we always ask what students bring to the table but we never really ask what teachers bring to the table mm -hmm. because some people may not see the connection between a person of European descent and their, their like life experiences where they're limited, where they don't have friends of, for example, people of African descent, they didn't go to school with them. They have no cultural context for being around people of color and for them to teach students of color and even teaching students who are of European descent and not having that uh, cultural background is really, really, um, it's really scary actually. And, and we need to make sure that teachers are competent in that area. Mm -hmm. So not only are we asking what kind of materials are you using, how are you teaching, what methodologies you're using, um, what strategies, but also to what do you bring to the table mm -hmm. as an educator? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So how does this book help educators become more conscious about social justice issues? Hopefully it's bringing it to the forefront to let them know that there is a connection between not because some people think, oh, well, I'm just teaching and we're just learning about grammar and vocabulary and not realizing Deeper that there's that. Is much more to it than that. Mm. Um, so in particular, what is your chapter about here in social justice and English language teaching? Mine is on uh, teacher self-reflection. Mm. I think it's important for teachers to reflect on who they are where they come from, what their prejudices are, their biases, their perceptions of students. It's really important for them to look and delve into that aspect of their own lives and realizing that we live in a racialized society and because of that, we're like sponges and we absorb it unknowingly. We absorb so much negative images and information about people and knowing that you know, implicit bias is unconscious and that if you're not recognizing that and reflecting on that on a mm. daily basis continually, then it's going to come out in some way and it's going to have some impact on those students. This is this is powerful stuff. You're, you're, you're just dropping knowledge. One of the <laughs> things we do is drop knowledge, right? And so, I mean, um, what do you, the other authors and editors, hope to accomplish with the, with the book overall? We're hoping that people realize not only why are we learning English for one. Mm. So this book specifically on English language learning and, you know, because of colonialism and the reasons why we're all learning English opposed to another language is an important aspect to look at. So um, we're hoping that teachers recognize that there's more to teaching English than just the grammar phonetics and, and other things similar to that. What do you think, what steps do you feel we need to take within our public education system, private, everything, education system period in our country to implement social justice within our K through 12 like curriculum? Like what, what do we need to do to get it embedded? Like, you know, when you, when, when we, when we look at, you know, history, we go take history class or English class, like it's, like you said, you know, grammar, vocabulary, uh, reading for uh, context, um, mm -hmm. you know, abstract, concrete. 
how do we get this social justice mm -hmm. within our embedded within our um, curriculum? Teacher education starts there first and teacher training. Um, I believe that um, the information that I was talking about is important for teachers to recognize before they can actually implement it. Obviously, teacher educators, people who are in charge of policy and so forth, they need to know about it as well. And if they don't know about implicit bias and, and if they're if it's coming out, then that's that's going to be a problem. Right. So it has to come from their own education first. Mm -hmm. For you, the, the the writing process. I'm always interested, you know, uh, when we have authors on, like the writing process. So what what process did you go through to um, create and put all the information in your from your chapter in into like words? I read a lot, yeah. and when I read a lot, I've been doing research on this for a very long time. So I pulled different information together, learning about neuroscience and the new information that's out about implicit bias this just something just clicked and and i said wow this is an aspect that people are not really focused on and, that, and they're not looking at they're not looking at where the teacher is coming from and it's an, an important aspect that's being missed mm. uh for for you what what inspired you to teach right so like you know you teach the english language learners so i mean just the overall like you know people always say teaching is a calling right something mm -hmm. you're called to do mm -hmm. how are you called to teach teachers past teachers that i've had um, they've encouraged me, inspired me. And so, uh, when you're so with the work that you do, you're you're already t teaching for, with that social justice lens in your classes. Mm -hmm. What uh, responses have you received from teaching students uh, uh, social justice issues in your English language learning class? I know? think I, they see the authenticity. Students know when you're real. Mm -hmm. They know when they can make sure. a, have a connection with yeah. you, and when they can make a connection with you, and they know that you listen, and they know that you know what's going on and you know what situations are out there and that you can talk about it, that's huge. Mm -hmm. So where do you see, um, where do you see your work in this, in this space going over the next few years? Well, the publishers asked me to write my own book oh, um, uh -oh. on my chapter and spe you know, specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with it. Um, I'm, I'm in full just, support. But I'm just, <laughs> It's a matter of time, you know, it's, it's really time consuming just writing a chapter, mm -hmm. how much time it took. So um, that's going to be a challenge for me with juggling all the other items that I have going on. Um, I'm teaching. Um, I just started to facilitate for another group called White um, People Challenging Racism. Ooh, and that's, in, Cam this, and that's in Cambridge. Yep. And it's amazing because a lot of um, white people they they say what's going on it's making them feel that they have to be called to action and they need to do something and they need to do more but they don't know how to go about it and so they're taking these courses so i took the course this summer so that i can facilitate it so i'll be facilitating that as well oh, that's powerful the year. you got to let us come like i have to come and sit in i need to audit a, 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 a session of course, of course. just to see what's going because i think that that's that's so powerful right there to to do that because i think you know when we think about it that's building a, a whole community and building um, to move us all forward, mm -hmm. uh, which is, which is which is amazing. Just quickly, uh, what do you feel? What are your thoughts on like Black Lives Matter and and how that correlates with students today? I would like to make a connection to that course that I that I just mentioned. I think w there are a lot of white people out there who want to learn about this, and they and they don't have an outlet and they don't have any inroads to how to grapple with what they're dealing with because, because white privilege keeps, keeps them silent. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, I believe that with the black lives matters, they can make that connection with white people who want to do this work. And if they do, then I think it become more powerful. Mm. Miss Lavette Coney, um, if people want to get in touch with you to learn more about the work that you're doing, facilitate this class and in places across the, the country, they want to purchase the book. How do they get in touch with you? The book can be purchased on Amazon mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they can call, they can contact me through email llc2129 at tc.columbia.edu. Okay, okay. That Ivy League in there, I like that. That's what's up. But no, you're you're doing amazing work. You know, here on Building Mindset, we're all about shifting the culture. And you are absolutely doing that in the classroom with your students, uh, with your chapter in this book, the future book that you're going to write. We're going to have you back when that comes out. Okay, um, and But we thank you for coming on Building Minds Forever today and sharing the work that you're doing and how you're shifting the culture. Thank you.
here on Building My Server will be back. Our next guest will be Marsha Murray. We'll be back here on Building My Server. My name is Jay Stan McCauley, and uh, I do business as Light Source Productions. I provide professional services in the area of strategic video communications. Uh, first, what we do is we help you craft your message uh, using what I call the rule of five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. We do event documentation, uh, content acquisition, full-scale productions, um, editing, and, of course, distribution uh, through our social media television network. And with social media, uh, video is more important now than it has ever been. Uh, whether you're talking big business, small business, nonprofit, church, or just an individual. Uh, let's say you, you know you you plan uh, uh, you're planning an event, a wedding, whatever the case may be. But but let's say a big event, uh, but no video. And you spent all this time, all these hours, uh, to put this event on, and maybe a hundred, two hundred people attend the event. But more important than that is that thousands could attend by watching it on social media. But of course, you don't think about this until after the event is over. You can't afford not to capture it for social media. And despite what people think, I am affordable. Give me a call. Let's plan your next video project and share it with the world on my social media television network. I promise you that you will have the attention of one person, me. Welcome back to Building Minds Forever. I'm your host, Brandon Frame. Again, we've just been bringing you amazing information, amazing people, and that only continues with our next guest. Our next guest is Marsha Murray, who is the CEO and founder of Northern Bells LLC. Thank you for coming on Building Minds Forever. Thank you for having me. So Northern Bells, you're doing some amazing work throughout the country, which is, right. which is very powerful. <laughs> uh, so first, I mean, what inspired you to start Northern Bells? To be totally honest, Northern Bell actually just followed me. It kind of came out of some of the things that I already naturally do, which is a lot of community work and connecting with different women that um, that are in my circle. So uh, one year, about six years ago, I wanted to do something different for my birthday. Mm -hmm. But um, through the whole planning process, this whole brunch idea came out of that. And then, you know, the more we thought about it, um, it was just, you know, maybe we should do this for women. You know what I mean? And then we added a fun spin to it with the whole hat thing mm -hmm. and bring it in kind of like that feel of the Southern Bells, but, you know, with the play on the name with Northern Bell. Okay. Okay. So, um, the hats. Mm -hmm. So tell me about the the importance, the importance. Of, of the hats. You know, you think about this idea of crowns and right. everything. So tell me the importance. Of the hats. Well, okay. So like I said, the whole term or the phrase everyone's familiar with the Southern Bells or, mm -hmm. you know, so when we thought about what do we call this, you know what I mean? Because we wanted to figure out how do we connect with women, but how do we bring that level of decorum or just characteristics similar to um, the Southern Bells in the Northern region in our area. So that's how we kind of came with the name, but the whole hat thing gives us that distinction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it kind of makes you feel in that moment when you're at brunch, like you're actually in that element of having more of a um, higher level of connection with other women around you. Mm -hmm. So why is it important? Um, I, I have three sisters um, mm -hmm. and I always think about, you know, the me being positive in their lives and speaking uh, life into them whenever I have an opportunity to. But why is it important for women to come together to network and to build community? It is very important. Like I said, um, just with my own experience, uh, I have a 
background in psychology. So just connecting with my own circle of friends, you hear the stories of all the things that women go through. Mm-hmm. When we want to talk about health wise, we can talk about mental health or just relationship wise, learning how to be able to not feel like you're alone um, is important in order for us to, you know, continue on and to find strength and to move past these different things that we go through. So to build community, especially when you have, um, like, in these times, this changing um, culture of, you know, young people are totally different than young people before. (laughs) Are they? So (laughs) it's like, you know, how do we bridge that gap? How do we get young people to talk and engage with older women to get those jewels and those, that wisdom that could be lost if we don't make these connections in this essence of community beneath them. So that's basically what Northern Bell tries to do, bring everybody together and make them all understand that you're not the only one going through this. Like, mm, this isn't well, new. <laughs> absolutely. In- intergenerational mental passing. Right. Very important. Right. And, and I love that. So with some of the work that you're doing, um, mm-hmm. you just did Bells in the City. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about this Bells in the City. Some of those pictures <laughs> are showing as you speak. Yeah. Uh, but but tell me more about that. The pictures are, are just powerful. Thank but tell you. me about Thank the mission, you. the vision. Behind that. So that was our first one. It's a new element that we're adding to the company. It's um, going to be more of a social impact type of a campaign where we're going to be going out into the community where we all look distinctively, you know, different from everyone else. Mm -hmm. But we're doing like photo shoots that really showcase the commitment of being women united, standing Mm -hmm. together in that um, that we have this connective essence about us. So that's really what Bells in the City is about. And we're going to have one in the fall. So that's going to come up. But this is the first one. So. It went very well. Yes, the pictures well. are stunning. I yeah. was just, I was captivated. Thank you. Just saw this melanin magic on my, <laughs> on my timeline. I and you like, saw yes. the little babies in yes, there too. Yes, yes. So you get the important. whole, the whole, the whole range there. Powerful thing. So this year, so uh, the brunch is coming up. Yes. Um, August. August thirteenth. August thirteenth. Two weeks out. Two weeks out. Um, what are some what are some things that people might be able to look forward to that you can share? I, I understand there's stuff you don't want to share. Yeah. So what, what you can share because you want to, you know, you got some surprises and stuff. <laughs> so what are some things that you well, want you to share? Well, you do know that like that's our uh, method of madness. We really don't share too mm-hmm. much what goes on with the brunch. Okay, so and- okay, we back it up. So uh, what feedback has you re- received from the past in terms of what women have shared? And oh, they love it. They love it. They love it. Like um, every year we grow, like to the point where. Every year up until last year, we had to find new venues. Wow. So we are like busting out of the scenes. Mm. Um, so they they enjoy it. We're right on target with what we're, you know, trying to do. But we don't really advertise too much what we do. That, and that's powerful. Um, that's like that's be- like Jordan sneakers. You exactly. don't have the power. People just show up. Exactly. So a lot of the feedback is, I didn't know what to expect, but... Oh, I'm bringing everybody next year. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm bringing my daughter. I'm bringing my niece. I'm bringing my sister. I'm bringing my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but really, just to give you some elements on a broader scope, Absolutely. we do um, elements within the program for networking uh, to really get the women engaged with um, talking to each other. Mm. So, like a lot of events nowadays, you hear, "Oh, this is a networking event," but then when you get there, Anybody if you're not that personality to yeah. go up and shake someone's hand, it's very hard to meet individuals. We actually embed that in our program. So, like everybody, you're gonna meet gets. somebody you don't know. At least one person, exactly. You're meet that well, you more than know. one. By more the time, one, okay. by the time we're ending, it's just like the quietest person in the room is like grabbing the mic to say, "Hey, I need help with this." Yeah. you know what I mean. So we actually build this um, sense of welcoming. You know what I mean? You're okay. We're all one. You can talk about what you need. Absolutely. Um, Powerful. And then we have some very special performances every year, yeah. but I keep those a secret. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. They got it. They got it. They got it. So, so, well, just one thing though, with this year, I saw the flyers is the unspoken. Yes. Why? I'm, I'm assuming that's a theme. Yes. Why that? So we've been, uh, for the past, I, I think it's two years now, we've been taking on different themes and um, really to tackle on or really to focus on something that women are experiencing. So basically the unspoken is going to talk about um, mental health. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, relationship experiences, all the things that we go through, but we don't really yeah. talk about like it. Taboo. There is like, a lot of stuff. Yeah, you there's know, a lot of stuff that women, it's kind of like we suffer in silence. Mm. You know what I mean? Even mm. when we, like some women get diagnosed with different diseases. Powerful that statement like this, suffer in silence. Yeah, and it's it's sad because 
the person next to you probably went through that mm -hmm. with their mom or their sister. So to get that knowledge and feel that sense of support again is very important. So we're gonna tackle some. You're talk, some you're talking about some stuff, but it's what we need. Like I exactly. think that we need it as as a whole as a society. Then if you want to just get into like black people and mm -hmm. then you get into subsets of the black women, you know, what I mean, I think in being together to share that because that's what it's all about when yeah. we uh, share. It helps somebody else because you don't know everybody else's story. Right. Um, yeah, I was watching Undercover Boss yesterday, and it's like I always I start crying sometimes. But <laughs> aside too. from that, you know, it's like but you don't know. You really don't, don't know. know. What people you don't know. You don't. We we actually operate it. with this like it's like we're a different character when we mm -hmm. go out in the world, but we have this inside of us, but we don't talk about it. Even with like in the media, all the racial tension. You know what I mean? We don't, there's some people that don't talk about how that is affecting them. They there's have trauma. sons, they have do exactly. And we're gonna, like, we're going to talk about it. Even just to say, I feel this way, Absolutely. helps, you know? So uh, last question, what's your favorite part about all of this, you know, what you're doing, the work that you're doing, this here in Building Minds Forever, <laughs> we bring people on who are shifting the culture. That's mm -hmm. what you're doing. How does that, what's the best part about shifting the culture and the work that you're doing? Oh gosh, the best part is just to hear how much this is needed. Mm -hmm. To hear directly from the young women, the older women, everyone in between, like to hear the success stories of who they've connected with, um, things that they're doing now, now that they know that it's possible to move past this, just to hear back from the people that actually experience or take part in the brunches and the events, like just to get their feedback. It really, that that's the best part. It really is. Marsha Murray, Thank founder you. and CEO of Northern <laughs> Bell. Thank you so much for coming on Building Minds. If people want to get in touch with you, learn more, how do they do that? Uh, so you can find me, you can go to our website, northernbellct.com, and you can shoot us an email, you can call us, all the information is up there. You can follow us also on social media, Northern Bell LLC, and get in touch with us. Awesome. Thank you again so much for Thank coming on Building Minds. Thank you for having Forever. me. <laughs> When we return here on Building Minds Forever, we're going to close out with the final frame. to Building Minds Forever. For today's final frame, legends are givers. They are known for creating foundations, philanthropic entities, and generous projects. What gifts are you giving to the world? Even if you don't have tons of money, you can give gifts that will outlast you, such as time and efforts to a worthy cause. Just like the legends, Yasmin, Levette, and Marsha, who are on the show today. You can be one too. You can be a legend. Thank you for tuning in to Building Minds Forever. Remember, be different, be great, and never stop. See you in two weeks.